Okay, so thanks a lot for the organizers for the invitation. Um, it's a pleasure to be here in Rio. And I would like to talk a little bit about quantum tunneling and cellular respiration and enzymatic catalysis. Um, I come from the University of Sao Paulo. I run a competition of biophysics and biochemistry lab. So everything I'm going to tell you is a computational results, molecular simulations. So no experimental data is going to be shown uh, from my group here. So what is quantum biology? All, all molecular processes are actually quantum processes. Some are, I call it trivial process, such as bone breaking and bone forming. Well, so this is not quantum biology. They are like just changes in the electronic structure of a molecule. People would say that, um, Quantum biology is, is, is a, a biomolecular, is when a biomolecular function is determined by a quantum coherence or quantum superposition. And there's this uh, nice reveal by uh, Nori and collaborators uh, years back in, in uh, nature physics, that kind of trying to establish what is quantum biology. And they mentioned uh, several biological processes where you can uh, have quantum effects, such as photosynthesis, the radical paramagnetic reception that we ha you have heard about in the previous two slides, uh, vision, electron transfer, and enzymatic catalysis. And I'll be talking uh, more about the last two of them today. Um, just, just as a provocation, I, I would like to uh, to ask again, what is quantum biology? Is it a new research area or is it just a buzzword? Okay. We don't want it to be detected here, all right? As most of the stuff Elon Musk says. So it's up to you to decide, is it a new area or a buzzword? What I would like it is whatever we think it is, that valuable research in this uh, area or in quantum biology should be pragmatic, should be judicious. In our group, we have been studying quantum effects in biological systems for a long time. We've been um, looking at photosynthesis and cellular respirations, and this is a scheme showing uh, the two photosynthetic systems found in chloroplasts in all plants. And uh, for instance, there's uh, this uh, uh, cytochrome BC1, this protein here, it is, it's equipped with iron sulfur clusters, this FES here, as well as this FD, the ferrodoxin. They are equipped with this iron sulfur clusters, which are, uh, uh, the, there is a, uh, an example of an iron sulfur cluster here from the, the nitrogenase enzyme, another enzyme. And these iron sulfur clusters are uh, responsible for the electron transfer for a lot of the processes uh, being carried out in this uh, uh, proteins involved in photosynthesis in cellular respiration. And their electronic structure is very, very difficult to understand, to calculate, because it's a superposition of a billions, even more electronic structures that arise from the strong correlation of the electrons in this uh, uh, the, of the impaired electrons in this cluster. It's such a difficult problem that, well, we, we have heard about quantum computing before, uh, in a couple of talks before, and understanding the electronic structure of this uh, uh, without any quantum computers, it's just classical computers, but using our uh, uh, minds to come up with approximations to be able to deal with such a, a superposition, such a large superposition of electronic configurations. And with, with that, we've been able to study several properties of these iron sulfur clusters. And I'll be uh, telling a little bit about that as well. We've been able to study uh, their uh, stability, their dissociation, their reactivity upon hydrolysis and several reactions that um, 
might uh, destroy or uh, participate in the catalysis cycle of this uh, sentence. But today I want to talk a little bit more about tunneling, quantum tunneling. What's tunneling? Well, tunneling uh, is a property that in the quantum world, that a particle, because of the wave particle duality, there is a probability that a particle will be able to travel through a barrier. For instance, in the quantum world, if I had a, a tennis ball here, I could throw it on that wall, and there would be a probability that the quantum ball would appear at the other side. That's the tunneling. Well, uh, do protons and electrons can tunnel in enzymes? Does it play a role? Is it important for the enzymatic catalysis? Is it essential for the enzymatic catalysis? We would like to answer those two questions, in particular for the cellular respiration, that's also called oxidative phosphorylation, OxFos. That's this uh, process that I'm showing here that happens in the inner mitochondrial membrane, in the mitochondria, in our cells, 95 or more of all the energy that's transduced in our cells are produced here. That's the powerhouse of the cell. What's going on here? We have four complexes, call it respiratory complexes, one, two, three, four, and then complex five. The first four of them, they are transferring electrons. Complex one, get electrons from NADH. Complex two, get electrons from succinate. And then they pass all these, uh, the, the electrons through iron sulfur clusters that we eventually reduce quin quinol quinone to quinol. And quinol will go to uh, complex three, where it's reoxidized, so the cycle can close. And uh, electrons eventually pass to cytochrome C, and it will go to complex four, where they eventually reduce oxygen to water. So that's, that's the reason we breathe oxygen from the air. The electrons from uh, uh, in a, the age and succinate, which are intermediate, intermediate metabolics uh, that will carry electrons removed from sugars, from fats, from all the food that we ingest, we wind up here and then eventually to oxygen. That's why it's called cellular respiration. And I, uh, I'll be talking uh, later on about uh, complex two and complex three. And uh, at the same time that we have electrons being transferred through this um, uh, membrane, we have protons uh, being pumped orthogonally from the matrix to the internal membrane space. And then complex five will use this proton gradient to synthesize ATP. And ATP is the, 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 mole the, uh, the, the energy source in the cell, is the, the, the energy currents in the cell. Okay, so that's uh, cellular respiration, oxidative phosphorylation. Looking at uh, complex two, the first reaction, as I mentioned, it's a succinate oxidation, and that's zooming the active site. We have uh, uh, the, the product of that reaction shown here, fumarate, and we have uh, the flavine, the flavine a ring from FAD. We just heard about FAD. You know, FAD um, was mentioned a lot, showing you in the previous uh, talk. So uh, the, the the reaction that is going on here is a hydride transfer from nitrogen five to carbon two of uh, uh, fumarate. Or uh, uh, actually, the reverse reaction will go from succinate uh, to FAD. But then you can think about Fumarate being oxidized to succinate or succinated to fumarate. So, looking at this uh, hydride transfer, we can uh, calculate this uh, reaction pathway and we see a barrier for the hydride transfer. And uh, we would like to see well, can the, the barrier be tunneled? Does it play a role here? Does tunneling through this barrier, is it important? Of the reaction mechanism. All right, so 
around the transition state of the reaction in the barrier, in the top of the barrier, we calculate the proton potentials. So what I'm doing here for the people interested in methodology, we are doing a semi-classical static approximation. We calculate the proton potential, and then we calculate the vibrational function of the transferred proton or the hydride here. And uh, we see the ground state and uh, excited state vibrational functions. And we find for this particular example that the splitting uh, between the uh, ground state and the first vibrational excited state, 3 k per mole, is larger than the, the barrier in the proton potential. So this, is, this characterizes a proton vibration adiabatic transfer. And then we can use the Wigner correction to estimate kappa, which is the transmission factor for this hydride transfer. When kappa equals one, there is transition state theory. There is no funneling at all. But for this uh, reaction, our kappa is 2.6. So there is some tunneling here, but uh, it's small tunneling. Okay, so the reaction will work, but tunneling is, is not um, fully necessary here. The uh, second system is complex three. So it's the third protein in the mitochondrial membrane. It's shown here again. And a zone in the active site, that's the, the quinol, that's the substrate. And it will transfer a proton to the, 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 the histidine side chain. And this histidine is connected to an, one of those iron sulfur clusters. And then uh, this iron sulfur cluster will then uh, transfer in a second step electrons to the cytochrome BC1. Oh, sorry, so for the soluble cytochrome C that we eventually uh, send these electrons to complex four. So this uh, reaction here uh, that we're looking at the, the, the quinone is a proton couple electron transfer. We have the, the, the quinol head that will transfer a proton to the, the midazole side chain. And then uh, uh, electron transfer will happen at the same time. But the electron will go to a different group, will go to the iron center. Again, how is the electron transfer going on here? The electron uh, as in the previous uh, examples, uh, for instance, in the uh, complex one, in complex two, the electron will transfer from each iron center to the next one. There is a series of iron centers here, like seven of them in complex one, three of them in complex two. Ele the electron will go through funneling. The electron has to tunnel from one iron center to the other. Otherwise, it doesn't. That's the, the transfer mechanism, actually. Here, it's coupled to the proton transfer. So both, like, both reactions, electron and proton transfer, will have to go at the same time. Using the same uh, similar, a similar uh, uh, methodology, we obtain a, a proton potential and calculate, again, the vibrational functions for the proton transfer that are shown here for the first or for the ground state, first, second, and third excited states. And we see that uh, the, 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 the penetration of the, the vibrational functions through the barriers are quite small. So tunneling, again, is not very important for this reaction. It's, uh, it's interesting that we can uh, estimate uh, the tunneling times, the tunneling times for the electron and for the proton, because that two processes going on here. And the tunneling time for the proton is more than time, th 10 times faster than the tunneling. The tunneling time for the proton is 10 times faster than the tunneling time for the electron. It's uh, 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 an important um, quality or property of this uh, reaction. All right, so conclusions. Does, uh, Quantum tunneling play a role in oxidative phosphorylation? Oh yes, it's there. Well, is it essential for electrons? Yes, 
the electrons has to tunnel from one iron center to the other, otherwise there won't be any electron transfer. For the protons, no, it's not essential. Both hydrides transfer in complex two and the proton couple electron transfer in, in complex three, they have small tunneling contributions to their thermal rates. So they could be working without any tunneling. It's not essential. With that, I want to conclude. I want to thank my group. I want to thank uh, Sophia and Felipe. Felipe just defended his uh, PhD thesis on Friday. Both of them uh, obtained the results of showing you. Uh, I want to thank FAPESPI uh, and especially Santos Dumont, the supercomputer we use uh, here in Rio in Petropolis. And uh, thank you for the attention.